welcome everyone to this session which is uh, what to do uh, when tests fail by tarun narula and sandeep yadav and we are glad they can join us today i am tarun i am working as a test manager in nokri.com uh, nokri.com at least from india uh, everyone will know about so for uh, those who don't uh, it is india's number one job site and is a part of infoh uh, that is the parent company which holds on to other sites as well like 99 acres and jeevan sathi so on a personal front i uh, i have worked on selenium since uh, 2012 and have also worked on api and apps automation so hi everyone i'm sandeep yadav i'm working as a uh, lead testing analyst in nokri so i have overall experience of around 6 years in manual and automation field so i worked on both manual uh, sorry on web based projects and mobile based project okay so uh, again welcome you all to our session on uh, where we'll be talking about what to do when tests fail we have given our intro already so i am tarun and uh, with me is sandeep so uh, we will look at some common causes of test failures and how to prevent them uh, we will also go over some of the best practices for functional automation uh, in the last we will cover some techniques using which uh, we can get to know about failing tests at the earliest and discuss what we can do to fix them faster okay so uh, let's get started over to you sandeep thanks tarun so uh, let's discuss in details about the problem statement of test failures and its impacts so here we will discuss about uh, what is a test failure and uh, what a flaky test is so let's first discuss about test failure so if any test that does not perform as per the requirement due to the occurrence of any you can say defect then it will result in a test case failure similarly a uh, flaky test is a test that both passes and fails periodically without any changes in your code so there could be many reasons due to which uh, test can be flaky uh, some of which are concurrency dynamic content infrastructure issues so we will looking into these in depth in further slides so now let's talk about the impact of test failures so test failures analysis is a time taking process so if the number of test failures are high then there is a probability that test failure analysis is not done every single time so this ultimately results in reduce the stability of the product and also has a negative impact over the trust on automation so these tests can also prove to be quite costly since they often require engineers to retrigger entire build on ci and often waste a lots of time waiting for a new build to complete successfully and these test failures are not only impact the feature being developed but also it impacts the time money trust related to it so it increases the test creation cost related to it test execution cost in, and it's impact the business and as there are frequent delays in the releases due to these failed test cases and this uh, test flakiness not only impacts small companies but but it also impacts the big one now let's consider an example of google so here in this image you can see it so there is a publication which was released by google in which they collected a large sample of internal test results over a month and uncovered some interesting insights like around 84% of their transitions from pass were fail due to flaky test and only 1.23% of test ever found a breakage almost 16% of their 4.2 million test have some level of flakiness and they spends around uh, 2 to 16% of their compute resource in rerunning these flaky tests now let's discuss about some real issues which can get ignored due to flaky test so first is application not behaving properly which actually leads to the test case failure now let's suppose there is a uh, there is some deployment related issue in one out of two app servers host, hosting any page so if the request gets directed to first server the page is loaded properly but if the request goes to second server user sees a 500 500 internal server error page so this might um, you can say get caught in our automation script but there is a high chances 
that the issue will be ignored if we assume that the test to be flaky. Now, same in the moving further. So sometimes issue related to APIs can also get ignored due to flaky test. For example, uh, due to unexpected database change, sometimes API returns a different response than the expected one. So which results in fall assert conditions and make your test case fail. And another thing is that if the if your backend server is very slow or it's taking a long time to process the API request, <clears throat> then it may lead to uh, request timeout, which is 408. So which will also results in your test case failure. Now, because of uh, last time, we sometimes ignore test run failures. Now, as you can see in this image, because of limited time, we start ignoring test run failures. And this automation testers are also may not have enough time for coding, which results in code uh, being unstable. And when they execute that code, it ends up with a lots of test case failures. So what will happen? This will, uh, you can say, leads to rise in dissatisfaction among them and impact their productivity. So as a result of so many automation tests failing, so what we start doing, we start testing the application manually and, start, uh, and stop making use of automation. So basically this defeats the entire purpose of doing automation. Right, so uh, thanks Sandeep. Uh, okay, so now let's see some causes behind why do tests fail and uh, discuss how to prevent them from failing. First in the list is the, uh, you can say the most obvious one, uh, which is not keeping our automation updated. So uh, there are new features, uh, those are being developed all the time, right? And they need to be added into automation. Uh, apart from that, the existing cases too need to be updated and uh, according to the change flow that is. So in this example that you see in front, uh, we have a new widget uh, which gets added on the Nokri uh, PWA homepage. So apart from adding this flow in our Selenium test suit, uh, we will also need to run the existing cases to see if they need to be uh, modified or not. Next are failures due to browser upgrades. Uh, suppose you're running a Chrome version, say 81, 83, whatever, and uh, it runs fine. All of your cases are uh, getting executed and no issues faced. But one fine day, uh, your browser gets updated to a newer version. Uh, this needs to be taken care of uh, in our automation, otherwise uh, it might start failing. So uh, in this case, a common exception that you see uh, is a session not created exception. What you can do over here is uh, you need to update your driver version. For example, the version of your Chrome driver or the Gecko driver. So these driver versions are tied to specific browser versions. Like we see here for Chrome. Uh, where each Chrome version has a corresponding Chrome driver. And similarly for Firefox, uh, also there's a minimum recommended Firefox version that is mentioned over there, right? Next in line are uh, failures due to poorly written locators and we are talking about not using IDs. So uh, this might happen due to a framework level restriction, uh, which mandates to use only XPaths or a particular locator to keep the framework generic. So finding the elements using ID uh, is both fast and stable, right? So if you have one, you should always use that. Build your framework according to that. Uh, like this Amazon page that we see here, uh, it has an ID for uh, the email input box. So we should use that. But practically not all elements have an ID, correct? So uh, if possible, you can ask your dev team to add them. It's uh, easy to add and a good practice to assign IDs to elements. Uh, you can try making use of name or CSS or XPath locators only in case the uh, getting the IDs added is maybe not feasible or practical uh, in that scenarios. Next we are talking again about poorly written locators, but this time about uh, absolute XPaths. So in my opinion, it is uh, one of the worst things that you can do to your test uh, using absolute XPaths. Let's take an example for that. Uh, sorry, Tarun. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Added that. So uh, let's take an example. Uh, the image you see here is of Nokri's job search result page, where I have searched for some Selenium web driver jobs. Right. So here, each job listing is represented by an article tag uh, in the HTML DOM. 
let's try finding an xpath for the first job that appears on the page so this absolute xpath that you see on the screen uh, starts from the root html and goes down till the article node so uh, without doubt it can easily break uh, in case any element is inserted anywhere in between so this is very fragile we should always prefer relative xpaths over absolute ones so uh, they are more robust and let's have a have a look on some examples so uh, this relative xpath is uh, one that was suggested by a common browser add on that we can use to find xpaths it is good but uh, you can see that it will break uh, as it has references to uh, intermediate elements between root and our article node so let's try to improve it ourselves the second uh, relative xpath makes use of only the article node and will point to the uh, first job on the page uh, even if the search happens on a different keyword than selenium web driver so uh, the learning that we can say over here is not to use absolute xpaths at all and also cross check if the xpaths generated by any tool is good enough or not okay so uh, now let's talk about some common mistakes uh, that we do while automation uh first is not covering all the application states uh, in our example here we see two snapshots of uh, nokri homepage the page on the right looks identical to the left uh, apart from this selenium web driver job search that i just did so uh, it is appearing on the homepage as a recent search in case i don't consider this scenario uh, while coding my tests some of them might pass but others might fail so the reason behind that can be uh, xpaths changing uh, for the sections like jobs by top brands or jobs by domain so uh, some cases might pass uh, for which the xpath is uh, correct but for others it might start failing so you should always have a good knowledge about all the flows and possible conditions of your app and uh, you should write your scripts accordingly next common mistake due to which uh, tests fail or uh, you can say test of a flaky is writing dependent tests so it is just like you can say uh, playing with some domino blocks uh, that you have lined them uh, and one failure is bound to impact them all so instead try writing independent tests uh, to make your script uh, more robust and uh, lesser prone to failures third is not using weights properly so uh, weights are necessary to prevent failures uh, especially when network is slow or you can say server responds slowly or maybe due to a difference in browsers uh, so here is a famous meme on browsers that fits our topic pretty well on a side note you can try out uh, edge browser from microsoft it is uh, definitely uh, better than ie and uh, based on chromium okay so uh, let's move ahead a uh, major reason for uh, test being flaky is uh, using sleep uh, instead of wait right so you should avoid sleep uh, but uh, because you can never be sure basically uh, when uh, the page is going to finish loading and all of that right uh, when when it is in the expected state so this will result in your uh, test passing sometimes and failing the other times leading your test to again appear flaky instead uh, you should use uh, implicit wait to set a driver uh, timeout at the driver level or uh, make use of explicit waits to check for a particular condition to become true so using these waits correctly will help you uh, achieve stable test results okay so uh, tests can also fail due to uh, difference in execution environments so you should always uh, keep in mind the environments you are going to run your tests on for example uh, your test or staging environments they can be slow uh, due to different hardware configurations and uh, they can even be faster so you should make use of waits over here definitely similarly your uh, automation execution infra uh, where you run your automation on can have slower machines than your laptops or network conditions also might be different right so uh, issues due to network latency can uh, especially be true if you are executing cases on a cloud testing provider like uh, browser stack sauce labs and so on so browser stack has a good article hosted on their blog for the same uh, you can go through that for more understanding on how this impacts uh, on cloud testing moving to uh, failures due to parallel execution so 
it is no doubt a great feature to have everyone will agree right so but you need to remember some of the points the uh, hardware configuration of machines uh, as we discussed they may, they might be slower uh, and there is always a limit that you will be able to run your test concurrently uh, post which your test might start actually failing more right so you have to consider that hardware limit software configurations uh, also uh, can impact your test things such as uh, different browser versions different os or maybe different java versions from your uh, local system or even across the grid machines uh, they can impact your tests so try having same hardware and software configurations across all your machines another very important point is uh, you need to take care of uh, data sharing between tests uh, running in parallel for example uh, your test might be using same user credentials across tests uh, this is fine when uh, tests run sequentially but once you are running tests concurrently uh, you need to check whether your application supports multiple sessions at the same time or not another case uh, can be of race conditions uh, where multiple tests are making changes on the same page and uh, validating the entered info at the same time so these tests will start failing and again appear flaky okay so uh, we have looked at some common causes of test failures and how we can prevent them uh, now uh, we will be talking about some of the best practices uh, that will help us reduce the test failures even further first best practice is uh, knowing how selenium works in and out uh, there are some great sites available on the internet you can always go through those but uh, i do highly recommend uh, going through the documentation that is available that is selenium.dev uh, also you can have a look at the uh, selenium code on github for a more detailed understanding on any uh, selenium class or functions that you are using and uh, in case you found uh, or you think that uh, you are facing a selenium level bug you can look for any existing issues uh, under github issues this is a pretty common one you should always use a source control uh, it will help you manage better especially when multiple uh, people are working on the same code base and uh, for that you can make use of git or svn next uh, we are talking about uh, knowing what to automate and where to automate so uh, let's see first uh, what to automate generally speaking the uh, more repetitive the uh, test uh, the higher is the probability that you can uh, make it automate and uh, go over that so look at some business critical paths uh, or tests requiring runs on different variety of data or even flows that are tedious to do manually and that too repetitively so you can automate those uh, also uh, you should remember that the tests are not the only candidates so you can always think of uh, creating test data for manual testing so that it, it helps out uh, in manual testing uh, by generating data quickly and uh, so these are also great con candidates for uh, your automation coming to a way to automate so here we see on the screen the famous uh, testing pyramid uh, that shows us that the unit tests are fast and uh, ui tests are slow right uh, similarly unit tests are uh, have lesser cost attached to them in terms of early detection and uh, lesser effort required for fixing when compared to ui tests so our aim should be to have a good chunk of our tests at unit or uh, service or api levels uh i will recommend learning about more about this topic on martinfowler.com or uh, alistairbscott.com those are great learning resources for this or in general too okay so uh another important practice is to not jumping uh, to the coding part directly uh, understand uh, more about your app functionality and think about what will be the best way to design your scripts as the image says uh, over here uh, you only get out what you put in don't expect more until you do more and that is very true in case of automation next we are talking about uh, retrying our failed test so uh, i have not said that this is a best practice as such but it can still be useful in some scenarios such as if your job fails due to environment setup uh, or any condition that you can think of uh, so first option is retrying failed test immediately 
uh, as and when they fail. Uh, for this, you can make use of uh, I retry analyzer if you're using test engine. Or you can rerun uh, all your failed tests at once uh, by using testngfail.xml. Uh, for Cucumber, we have a similar option that is available over here. Or you can go ahead and implement a custom solution uh, based on your needs. So one that we have tried out is uh, as shown over here. Uh, we have our uh, Jenkins job X. Uh, it is made up of Selenium tests, Selenium suits. So uh, once this job X finishes, uh, it will trigger a child job. Uh, we call it uh, rebuild checker. So uh, the purpose, uh, if you talk about rebuild checker, so the purpose of rebuild checker job is to check if uh, job X's failure was more than the defined threshold percent, say 95 or 100 percent in case the uh, environment config went wrong or something like that happened. <laughs> so uh, if the failure is below the threshold, we do nothing. Uh, otherwise, we can open the URL for JobX again uh, using Selenium and click on rebuild. So uh, here we have used a threshold percent for this example uh, to discuss over here. But uh, basically, you can play around this and build a custom solution for uh, running your test as per your requirement. Great. So uh, we have reached our next section. Uh, over to Sandeep. Uh, thank you so much, Sarun. Thank you for sharing the causes and preventions related to uh, test failures things. So guys, in this session, we will discuss about those things or tools which immediately reports at its interface if any condition that is likely to indicate a failure. So before moving further, uh, let's first discuss about what is a static code analysis. So it is basically a method of debugging by examining source code before a program is run. And it's done by, uh, you can say, analyzing a set of code against a set, or you can say multiple set of coding rules. So we are discussing here some static code analysis tools, which can be used based on your requirement, out of which the first one is PMD. So what PMD does, it basically identifies potential problems, which mainly uh, like unused and duplicate ports, unused variables, empty cache blocks, unnecessary object creations, and so on. So as you can see in this image, the below one, it's showing duplicate code with 40 warnings from one analysis. So this comes through this PMD tool. The next tool is check style. So it basically analyzes uh, source code and looks to improve the coding standard by transversing over, you can say, simple AST generated by check style. So it verifies the source code for coding conventions like headers, imports, white spaces, formatting, etc. Uh, and same in the same image, you can see Chextel providing you 158 warnings, out of which nine are new one and 45 are the fixed one. Okay, and <clears throat> some other static code analysis tool that you can use based on your requirement like. Rexis, Rips Technologies, PVS Studio, Q1. So uh, static code analysis tools helps in face fail fast things by converting your unsecure code into the one which is good to use. <clears throat> now moving further, we will discuss about running tests on underdevelopment builds. So automation, uh, you can say, should be started as early as possible and ran as often as needed. So it will be good for you the earlier you start your automation uh, in the life cycle, your project will be better and it will help you to catch the issues early. And uh, you can say additionally, you will get to know uh, any impact on your existing automation script. So bugs detected uh, early are a lot cheaper as you know this thing, uh, are, are a lot cheaper to fix than those discovered earlier, than those discovered later in the development life cycle. Now let me share an example with you. So in our organization, we have a set of nightly build suit which gets executed every night. So the entire automation suit is run on the new build and it finds out the failure at an early stage. So we can uh, also decide easily whether you want to start automating the build or waiting for a stable one. <laughs> So now moving further, uh, we are discussing here about triggering flag notification for the failure details. 
so i hope everyone knows about slack uh, still let me uh, tell you that slack is a communication platform which is used in many organization where what you can do you and your team can ask questions share updates and stay in the loop so you can share notification of test case failures on slack channel by following these steps which i'm telling you so first you have to add uh, jenkins ci service in slack so this the first image is the icon of G jenkins ci service which you have to add in slack then you have to add slack notification plugin in jenkins and then you have to configure the global slack notifier settings in your jenkins job according to your need uh, now you can uh, trigger a notification of on slack uh, whether it's depend on you whether you want to trigger it it's depend whether you want to trigger the notification on job pass or fail or skip case conditions now let's see the image in this image uh, what is happening is uh, admin runs a job through jenkin which consists of uh, high priority tests or you can say premium test cases and then uh, after the completion of the jobs uh, jenkin find out the status and send it to the stack channel so using this it will be easier to the stakeholders to know the updated status of these test cases whether it's pass or fail and it's also for you to figure out the status of test cases whether they are pass or fail and in the last image you can see uh, this is the notification which is received on slack with the status of failure and success similarly so uh, if you don't want to trigger slack notification using jenkins then what you can do you can simply integrate uh, incoming webhooks in your test class so what is this incoming webhooks uh, so it's a simple bit way to post messages from external source into your slack so as you can see in this first image it's a you can say image of uh, incoming webhook so here is a code snippet which you can use in your test class to get a notification on slack uh, in case of any test case failure or pass it's depend on you whether you want to trigger the notification in case of test case failure or pass so after uh, adding incoming webhooks in your slack it will create a webhook url which you can use in your code so as you can see in this image the second one it is showing uh, rest assured dot base uri and is equal to the url which is my webhook url so you can easily create it by just going to the slack channel your uh, slack portal and you can easily create it by adding your incoming webhook now the last image is basically showing the notification which i receive in case of failure with the ex exception in it so you can customize this kind of notification as per your need or whatever the text you want now like slack you can also trigger a mail notification for high priority test cases in case of they are fail for this what you can do you, know, you can just use java mail jar in your project or uh, instead of it you can use uh, dependency in your pom.xml file so here is a code snippet which i uh, pasted here uh, it's used for sending uh, the mail where you have to pass the subject message and the recipient email ids and instead of this uh, code snippet you also have to add smtp authentication which i not mentioned here so what it will do so whenever a task is failed so it will uh, Uh, notify the stakeholders or whichever uh, you want to send the email so it will be easy for them to figure out which task is a fail at an early stage now similar to uh, as discussed earlier about the email and slack notification you can also implement sms notification service in case of task is failures so uh, for sms notification you must have a sms gateway service provider because it is very essential for you to send the sms so there are many sms service providers out of which few are i listed here in the slide like value first way to sms test locals so in nokri in my in our organization we are using value first sms service provider for sharing the status of user profiles or applied status of the jobs to our users Uh, so we can use the same service on, in our script easily here is a code script, snippet which i am using hello am i audible yeah now you are
Oh, sorry, there was an issue in the line. So, uh, so uh, can you move back on the black back side for me, please? Yeah. Yeah. So here I was saying that here's a code snippet which in, which you can use for sending the SMS. So what you can do, you have to pass the phone numbers and a customized message where you want to send your uh, SMS. Okay. So now let's uh, till now we discuss about uh, fail faster thing. Now uh, let's discuss about how fast can we fix these fail test cases. So in this category, the first one is understanding some common error messages. So uh, it will be good to have some knowledge of uh, Selenium exception in advance. So it will easily for you to find out the root cause in case of task case failure and how to fix them easily. So in this slide, we will uh, focus on some of the most common exceptions in Selenium. So out of which the first one is tail element reference exception. Uh, so what it does, so it basically occurs when the reference element is no longer present on the DOM page. So for fixing this, what we can do, we can recreate object instance in case of if any page, page changes. Now the second exception is session not found exception. So it uh, occurs when web driver is performing the action immediately after quitting the browser. So for this, uh, you have to make sure that no driver action Code should be there after quitting it. Now the third exception which I am discussing here is timeout exception. So it occurs when the command did not complete in enough time. That is the element did not uh, display in the specified time. Uh, so it can be fixed by increasing the implicit wait time. So there are some uh, other exception uh, like no such element exception, no such frame exception no alert present exception, no window present exception. So these exception may be due to slow network. So for this, what you have to do, you can make use of explicit way. Now moving further, a visualization of test execution over time. So it is beneficial for you to record details of all your test execution and build a dashboard over it for analyzing the execution data over a period of time. This will provide you insights such as uh, which cases tends to fail more or are flaky, or you can say what are the common exceptions due to which your script fails, or you can say how long uh, your test case took for the execution. So now let's take an example. There is a test which took only a few seconds to finish in one run and nearly a minute longer in the next run. So, this does not necessarily mean both had passed with green colors. Actually, uh, technically they both passed, but the duration of long running test can be an indicator that something was not correct. So you can make use of the dashboard, this kind of dashboard uh, for figure out such kind of issues. So you can build in this visualization of your test execution by using many tools like Kibana and Elasticsearch. So there are few links which I mentioned in the slide, which where you can go and check for more details. Like the first one link is based on a Elastic blog, and the second one is the Selenium conference 2018, where there was a talk based on visualization. Follow the coding standard uh, and can be easily maintained. Uh, anyone can understand it at any point of time. Why this need occurs? Uh, multiple people might this in parallel, or you can say so. That's why now next is for automation testing. Basically, uh, not only uh, makes you aware of the status of your automation runs, but also helps you in finding out the root cause of your bugs. So there are many reporting frameworks which you can use, uh, like test ng report. So here is a simple uh, image which I posted here. And so it's a test ng report. So what it basically uh, showing us is the number of test cases pass fails with their execution time. Now next one is extend report. 
So as compared to test and the report, extend report has more features and capabilities. Like it is more easy to read the exceptions and details about the execution. So it's it's a customized HTML report and the UI is better than you can say uh, with the test ng report. So it can be easily integrated with test ng J unit at Cucumber framework. So uh, similar to extend report, uh, there is one more report you can use, which is LDO report. So it's also an open source framework, which easily integrate with test ng and J unit. So it provides some additional annotations which you can use, uh, like at the rate severity, at the rate step, at the rate attachment, and at the rate link. So next thing is better logging. So uh, so it um, by using uh, logging, you will be able to save a lot of debugging time, and it will also help in maintaining the consistency of the code. So as we, as, she, as shown in this image, uh, there is a extend test method which is used to create logs in the class so in this report the second image you can see the logs which can be helpful for debugging the field test cases as soon as you want so the next thing is uh, using uh, take screenshots and video recording so in this if you take a screenshot so it will be helpful for you to figure out the failed test cases uh, uh, where it is failed. So it will be helpful for you to easily figure out the things. So here's a code snippet. So in this, uh, it is showing how to create a reference of take screenshot method. And then you can call the method to capture screenshot and copy it to the location where you want to uh, save it and call the this method in case of test case failure. And, uh, Next thing uh, we are discussing here about uh, re recording. So uh, using screenshot for your Selenium test when they fail is cool, but uh, there are some limitations. For example, it is hard to know exactly what happened before a failure occurred during a snapshot. So capturing video of your test execution helps you to track the defect easily in case of any uh, failure occur. So it determines what went wrong in your test execution. So for recording, uh, you can use two tools out of which the first one is FMPG and the second one is ATU test recorder. So there are the links provided in the slides. So you can go through these links to know more about these uh, video recording tools. Okay, so uh, we are almost done and the time is also up. So let's quickly recap what we talked about. We uh, discussed about test failures, their impact, uh, the causes of test failures, how to prevent them, uh, along with some of the best practices. Uh, we also discussed uh, how to know failing tests at the earliest and uh, what we can do to fix them faster. So hoping that this session was useful and uh, has given you enough overview on what to do uh, when tests fail. So that is it from us. Uh, we can have some questions and answers if but there is still some time. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Tarun and Sandeep. Uh, since we have only two questions, I think it would be clever to take sure. them. Sure. Okay, so just give me one second. Yeah, so the first question is, how can we fetch the browser console logs in case of any exception? Okay, so uh, there is a utility that is available. Uh, you can integrate uh, DevTools also, or you can wait for Selenium. Uh, for I guess uh, there is a way to fetch all the dev tools info from there, so you can make use of that. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, and one more question is: um, Let's say while running a test suite, if a couple of tests get failed, then when should we retry? Immediately or uh, just after completion of entire suite? And uh, what should be the retry count? So, okay, so uh, this is uh, a basic. A very basic question that many people yeah. will have. So mm -hmm. retrying is again, as I said, uh, it might not be the best practices to go after. It might be useful in some scenarios, uh, like if you have some uh, like config failures or the environment failures, or in some cases where you feel that something went wrong for the entire job. So uh, running the suit level uh, can be a good option. Running at test level, you can think of only in case you are sure that the tests are not flaky as such. Exactly. Uh, because otherwise you will uh, ignore some of the real app issues if you retry. So, for example, if uh, like Sandeep discussed it earlier, if your app gives a 500 the first time and 
uh, next time uh, when you retry the test it it works fine so uh, the test will work but your app is still not okay yeah that makes and sense and there is one more thing so the question was also what should be the re retry count so it's basically it depends upon the execution like in the if you uh, mention the retry for the one count so if it's work uh, correctly then maybe it's due to the application problem and it's totally depend on you for how many time you want to use the retry right it is uh, purely practical like uh, whatever like we uh, for our cases what we do is we try uh, retry only once so if that for the test that we are sure that they are not like so uh, if it is okay in one time then it is good otherwise we don't so it depends on you exactly okay so we had only uh, those two questions um, so thank you sandeep and tarun for sharing you. your experience thank you sure today thank you sorry for the technical disturbances that we had in the call uh, sorry about that thank you everyone yeah. for attending